सॉल्विंग एस एफ जीज डे एंड नाइट लेवल वन नहीं किया था उन्होंने पहले सॉल्व तो रात रात को बैठ के करते मेरे को वो एक रैंक की तलब लग गई थी सर एक बार आने लगी तो फिर लगा कि नहीं यार नीचे नहीं जानी चाहिए जो यहाँ पे टेस्ट होगा आई विल गिव चाहे मैंने कैसे भी दिया हो पर मैंने वो टेस्ट रेगुलर दिए जब तक मैं यहाँ पे था Delhi's pollution crisis is back in the headlines and this year it feels worse than ever. Every winter the air quality index shoots past severe, schools shut down and the city turns into what many call a gas chamber. But beyond the smog and health advisories a bigger question is emerging. Is India's AQI system actually misleading us? Is the air even worse than the official numbers show? Let's break this down to understand the crisis We need to look at the drivers behind this and why does it accelerate in winters. Number 1, inversion layer. During winters, cold air settles near the surface and warm air rises above it. The phenomenon we call temperature inversion. This forms a lid that traps pollutants close to the ground. So everything from emissions, dust, smoke are suspended in air causing ill effects to your nose and lungs. Number 2, stubble burning. Punjab and Haryana's paddy harvest happens around October November. Farmers torch the residue for quick field clearing. These fires release massive volumes of PM 2.5 which travels straight into NCR. Third, local pollution sources adds on to this. Say for example, vehicle emissions, construction dust, industrial pollution, garbage burning, etc. Individually these are manageable but when added to the trapped winter air they turn deadly. Number 4 meteorology. Due to low wind speeds in winter pollution stagnates. All of this is measured through an indicator called AQI. Let's understand this in detail. AQI or air quality index is a simplified number from 0 to 500. It takes multiple pollutants PM 2.5, PM 10, NO2, SO2, ozone and carbon monoxide and converts them into a single public friendly scale categories look like this 0 to 50 good 51 to 100 satisfactory 101 to 200 moderate 201 to 300 poor 301 to 400 very poor and 400 and above severe in delhi winters we routinely see 450 plus even touching 999 at specific hot spots but here's the twist India's AQI often looks better than the real danger on the ground. And here's why experts criticize it. Number 1, India uses much higher safe limits than global standards. Take PM 2.5, the deadliest pollutant. WHO prescribes safe limit of 15 micrograms per meter cube in 24 hours average period. India's safe limit claims it to be 60 micrograms per meter cube. that's four times higher meaning air that is dangerous by global medical standards is often shows as merely moderate in india second aqi compresses complex data into one color and number it does not tell you the exact pm 2.5 concentration or the exposure risk or even the long term health impacts or the toxicity of specific chemicals it gives a false sense of simplicity third aqi is averaged across a city Delhi's pollution varies massively across different localities but you only hear about the city wide AQI so if one area is extremely toxic and another is slightly better the average still hides the danger hotspots four another issue is the monitoring network many stations across india go offline miss data or report incomplete readings some stations record pm 10 and not pm 2.5 for hours and because aqi is based on available pollutants missing data allows the official score to look better than the real conditions fifth no measurement for key hazardous pollutants india's aqi ignores ammonia spikes in winter toxic volatile organic compounds or the vocs ultra fine particles which are less than 1 micron which penetrate blood streams directly these are major contributors to respiratory damage And lastly, government revises norms to make air look better on paper. For example, 
PM 2.5 levels considered hazardous by WHO are often categorized as just poor or very poor in India. This creates the illusion that the situation is under control. So how bad is pollution really and why does this matter? Because poor AQI isn't just a number, it's a public health emergency. According to recent reports, more than 17,000 people die each year in Delhi due to air pollution. In winters, hospital admissions for asthma, COPD and respiratory infections spike by 20 to 30 percent. Children in polluted cities like Delhi show reduced lung capacity, sometimes comparable to long-term smokers. Studies from Ames and the University of Chicago show that long-term Delhi residents may lose up to 8 to 10 years of life expectancy due to chronic exposure. Even short-term exposure can thicken the blood raise blood pressure and trigger heart attacks, especially in older adults. PM 2.5 is so tiny that it bypasses the body's natural filters and enters the bloodstream directly. From there, it can reach the heart, brain and even the placenta in pregnant women. This is why pollution is not just a lung issue, it's linked to stroke, diabetes, premature births and even early cognitive decline. And here's the scary part. Even on days when India's AQI says the air is moderate, the PM 2.5 levels may still exceed global health limits. So people feel reassured by the category, but the long-term damage continues quietly. If the science is clear, why doesn't India adopt stricter standards? There are practical and political reasons for this. If India suddenly shifted to WHO norms, almost every major city would report hazardous air for most of the year. That could lead to public panic, legal challenges and pressure on governments to impose major restrictions on industries, vehicles and construction. These changes are expensive and unpopular. Furthermore, monitoring high-quality pollutants requires sensors that are costly to maintain. Many cities simply don't have the infrastructure. And acknowledging the full severity of pollution comes with economic consequences, from construction halts to traffic restrictions. So, instead of fixing the underlying problems, the system has adapted to show more manageable numbers. So what needs to change? If India wants to protect public health, it needs a more honest system. First, we need better monitoring. Delhi must expand its network of air quality sensors, especially in pollution hotspots, and ensure that all data is live, transparent and tamper-proof. Without accurate numbers, every policy becomes a shot in the dark. Second, policy enforcement has to get serious. GRAP should be implemented consistently, not only when the situation becomes severe. Construction dust, vehicle emissions and brick kins need strict round-the-year regulation. The rules already exist, they need to be enforced. Third, Delhi must shift from reactive to structural solutions. Instead of temporary fixes like cloud seeding, the focus should be on cleaner public transport, more green spaces, better waste management and scientific crop residue handling. And Delhi cannot do this alone. Punjab, Haryana and UP must work together to stop stubble burning at its source. Fourth, public awareness and accountability are key. Citizens deserve real-time data to protect themselves and public pressure must push governments toward real action. Air pollution has to be treated as a health emergency, not as a seasonal headline. Finally, investing in long-term transitions like cleaner public transport, renewable energy, crop diversification, urban greening and better waste management. Delhi's pollution crisis isn't just a winter headline anymore. It's a public health emergency that we have normalized. And when the AQI system sugarcoats the danger, citizens cannot protect themselves and policymakers feel less pressure to act. It's time to demand transparency, accountability and real action because clean air isn't a luxury. It's a right.